Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, October 15th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic, and of course the big story, Hurricane Gonzalo now moving away from the Caribbean, and next stop, unfortunately, is Bermuda. As much as it would be nice for this to be a fish storm, this is likely to pass very close to Bermuda on its way out to sea here, and may even impact Canada after that. So uh, we may have a couple of landfalls left to go, and this is the... Uh, visible satellite imagery right now this has been a very very well organized and strong storm and has really been one of the healthiest hurricanes not even in terms of raw strength but one of the healthiest and uh, well established hurricanes we've seen in some years in the Atlantic and certainly the best one this year uh, we have a very small eye today and there's actually an eyewall replacement cycle going on right now and if we actually pause this at the end, we can see that the inner eye is very small. The recon just reported it as being about six miles wide, and the outer one is about 30 miles wide, and it goes like this. And it's actually only replacing one side. The northern eye wall is actually uh, shared between both eyes, and then this outer one on the south side is what is newly forming and will try to contract. And uh, this new one is actually not so large that it could contract without significantly weakening Gonzalo as the inner one disintegrates. And eye wall replacement cycles are tricky. Usually dry air gets into the core and messes them up pretty good during the process. And sometimes that can weaken them a couple of categories and it can be very hard to come back from that. However, Gonzalo has had a history of doing things in a way that maximizes favorability for it as a storm and uh, that just indicates that the environment and its structure has been pristine and if that continues here this outer eye wall might contract in a way that allows Gonzalo to maintain uh, its cat 3 intensity and is pretty close to a category 4 hurricane now based on the latest aircraft data but we'll see if the National Hurricane Center decides to upgrade it uh, so this may end up still being a pretty strong storm even coming out of this replacement cycle, but the bigger point is that even if, uh, even if it weakens coming out of the replacement cycle, it's still going to be coming very close to Bermuda here as a strong, powerful, and dangerous hurricane, and uh, eyewall replacement cycles also, lead, also usually lead to an expansion of the wind field, which means that even if the forecast track doesn't take it directly over Bermuda, as uh, right now it does take it to the west, a larger storm, and a strong storm means that very uh, bad conditions, indeed hurricane conditions, could still pass directly over the island. And the eastern side of the storm would be the strong side because as hurricanes move, it's usually the side of the storm to the right of their direction of movement that is the worst side. And uh, this would be the right-hand side for Bermuda. So this would be a very nasty storm even if it was not a direct landfall. And we're still well within the forecast cone of error here, two days out, two and a half days. There's room uh, for the track to wiggle. So you could always get the storm wobbling closer to the island than you expect at the last minute. But we're still a couple days out, but Bermuda should definitely be preparing for a hurricane and paying heed to the National Hurricane Center advisories, warnings, and uh, anything from their local services as well. Please be safe as the storm approaches one of the strongest threats they've had in some time. Now out in the Central Pacific we have Tropical Storm Anna and this is going to be making news at around the same time that Gonzalo is, maybe a day or two after. This is the visible satellite imagery right now, the last frame is kind of messed up, but we see this a large area of convection. This has been persistent with Anna ever since formation, but what has not been present is organized low-level structure. We, uh, the, When you look at microwave passes, which I didn't put up on here to show you, uh, but there's very little under here. Um, in terms of a formative eyewall or anything like that. The uh, Central Pacific Hurricane Center is giving Anna 70 mile per hour winds as an estimate. But microwave passes did indicate that the center last night may have been up here near the edge of the convection, not centered underneath, more up here. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how strong this actually is, but we won't be flying a recon plane in there for some time yet. Uh, but given how close this may get to Hawaii, there will be recon flights into it before that time. 
We do see, if you look closely, some of the low-level winds accelerating in the southwestern quadrant during the last few hours. That may indicate some lowering pressures in here, so this may indeed be organizing a little bit further today, but we will see. This is the uh, water vapor imagery large scale, again, upper low backing away to the west of Anna, and this is allowing a bubble of light winds aloft that could allow Anna to expand her outflow away from the center of the storm. And again, this takes air away from the top of the storm and allows the air pressure to fall, which increases the winds and strengthens the storm overall. And this will be moving following this, up, this upper low toward Hawaii here. And the steering pattern is a little bit complicated, but most of the models agree on getting it pretty close to the islands here. And this is the official forecast track doing the same bringing this just southwest of the Big Island and up into this area here. Now the very details of this track are not going to be ironed out three, four days in advance here. There is going to be room for dancing around. A 13,000 foot volcano in Mauna Loa could definitely cause this thing to wiggle around as it gets close as well. But the general idea and message here is that this could be a hurricane approaching Hawaii. And uh, this is a rather rare, in fact, a very rare event for this state. And so this is going to be a big event. And uh, if it gets close enough to bring hurricane conditions to the island, that would be historical. And uh, this will be weakening on its way in because the water gets cooler in here. Uh, so it will be weakening on approach, um, but it could very easily be as strong or stronger than Izel from earlier this year, which came in at this angle and moved into uh, uh, the big island here as a tropical storm. This could be an actual hurricane coming in. So a big weather event coming a day or so after Gonzalo impacts Bermuda. So that's the Central Pacific, and in the Atlantic, again, watching Gonzalo, Bermuda at most risk, and then after Bermuda, Canada follows. This may make it all the way up to the Canadian Maritimes, perhaps as an extratropical cyclone, but could be hurricane force even still when it moves up that way, and that could bring significant damages up there as well. But Bermuda is first with one of their biggest hurricane threats in some time. The only other thing in the Atlantic is for kind of the medium to longer range, we see this front that came down into the Gulf. We talked about how this monsoonal gyre funny business over here in your Central America and the Eastern Pacific was not going to go away, that we would have to wait for something eventually sneaking up into the Bay of Campeche. And with this front coming down, it's sort of like poking a fire with a stick. You really stoke the fire down here when you do this with the front, and that will allow some of this energy to drift northward toward the Bay of Campeche. And this thing developing in the Pacific is supposed to come into Mexico and join up here in the Bay of Campeche, and we may get uh, something interesting trying to develop here. And this is the European out to day seven showing a potential storm forming in the southwest gulf. Now where it might go after it forms here is still the number one question and whether or not we can actually get something very organized to develop in here. Uh, but given how late it is in the year, it's not necessarily going to go into Mexico like so many of these do. We could have it coming out toward the Gulf states of the United States or drift into the Caribbean as well toward the east. So that's something to watch for in the longer term. But right now, obviously, we are focused on Hurricane Gonzalo. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.